Did you ever wish you could walk around inside of the bewitched home? Well, no need to twitch your nose because it's about to happen. Hi, I'm Marina Coates. Welcome to Behind the Scenes, where we get up close and personal with all your favorite TV and movie homes. Today we'll be exploring a TV home that is on almost everyone's list of favorites, The Bewitched Home. And we'll have author and bewitched historian David Pierce along for the ride to give us fun facts and commentary. If you find yourself falling in love with the actual design of The Bewitched Home, then you might like another show I have on this channel called Cinematically Inspired Design, where we take the design secrets from the cinema and bring them into our own homes. There's a reason you fall in love with the movie homes you fall in love with. Come find out why. Now, let's get started. Before we venture inside 1164 Morning Glory Circle, let's look at an overhead view of the main floor to get our bearings. Here's the large living room just made for entertaining, which they did a lot of. Next, you enter the dining room with its own little built-in nook off to the side. And then behind that is the kitchen with a small dine-in area. As you walk to the hallway, on your right is the door that leads to the garage, and straight ahead is Darren's den. You probably noticed the funny angles going on in the den. I have proof for every square inch and wonky wall in that den, and I kept the receipts, as they say. It obviously doesn't match what was going on on the outside at all, but I'm showing what the home looked like on the inside. The home changed so much over the course of the series, I had to choose a season and stick with it. I chose season three, the first year Bewitched was shown in color. Seasons one and two have been colorized, so we can't be sure of the actual colors. But beginning in season three, we know the real colors. Before we begin the tour, I'm going to show you the living room, stripped of all of its furnishings. And I want you to picture in your mind what you remember seeing there. When you picture the Stevens living room, how do you remember it? It went through a lot of transformations. Let's start with the iconic fireplace wall. In seasons one and two, the fireplace wall was white brick with built-in niches on one side and a cream-colored bookcase on the other. In season three, we begin to see the fireplace wall the way most of us probably remember it red brick and built-in wood bookshelves on either side. And then a strange thing happens. In just two episodes that season, which were actually filmed earlier, which is why, the fireplace wall changes to something we haven't seen before and won't see again. A red brick fireplace, not white, with built-in niches on the left-hand side and a brown wood bookcase on the right. Trick C, and no magic involved. But by episode 15 of season 3, it's back the way we remember it best. That's a lot of shenanigans for just one season. Then we see one more change towards the end of the series, with light wood and a mantle added for the first time. The art above the fireplace changed over the seasons too. Originally, it was The Old Guitarist by Picasso, hung sideways, thanks to Facebook Bewitched fans for pointing that out to me. But starting in Season 3, we see a Grandma Moses painting entitled The Old Checkered House in 1860. Later it changed to a different painting, but still by Grandma Moses. I'll put links below for some of the artwork you see. And by the way, interesting to note, this exact same painting hung over the fireplace in the master bedroom too, even on some of the same episodes it was seen in the living room. Curious. This corner over by the front window, where Gladys Kravitz would often peek in, had several different furniture arrangements over the years too. Here are just a few of them. The furnishings in the main area saw many changes as well. Which ones do you remember? Some things that took place in the Stevens living room were cars going through the wall, 
turning it into a queen's court, Endora taking a bath, Darren as a werewolf tearing up the room, an appearance by Leonardo da Vinci and Benjamin Franklin to name just a few, and some psychedelic performances. Now let's take a walk through this much loved and very familiar living room. As we do, I want you to be on the lookout for two Easter eggs from the show. Those are little mementos from different episodes. Did you find them? They were the truth statue that caused mortals within its range to speak the truth no matter what, and the rattle with a bug planted inside by Diaper Dan to record private conversations. Now on to the dining room. Let's start with the bar. Most of us probably remember it sitting here, but it actually moved around a lot. It was also shown here in the corner by the front window, and under the front window, and even on top of the TV set. That's a whole other kind of bar hopping. The chandelier over the dining room table disappeared and reappeared too. Now you see it, now you don't. In one episode, even the built-in nook in the dining room vanished. Such a beautiful nook too. Too bad we didn't see much of it on the show. We rarely got to see this little corner of the dining room either. Here are a few glimpses of the way it looked at different times. The actual dining room set itself changed too over the course of the series. The entrance from the dining room into the kitchen went through some rather radical changes and it would switch back and forth from episode to episode. Sometimes it was open above with short swinging shutter doors and other times it was closed at the top and had just one full length door. Some things that took place in the dining room were throwing smart dinner parties, throwing pies at Endora and Serena, typical housewife stuff, and not so typical, pots and spoons flying by, and Uncle Arthur showing up in unexpected places. Now we're going to do a little sweep around the dining room See if you can find an Easter egg in this room. Okay, that one was pretty obvious. But do you know which episode it was from? It says, Leps et is rever. Samantha hears Endora say this phrase and zaps it up to see what it means. Reverse the spell backwards. Here's the kitchen we know and love. And that incredible Frigidaire Flare Stove Oven combo. You can still find these today. I've found a few by checking sites where people sell used items. However, Uncle Arthur is optional. And then there's that unique grill with the fireplace below. We never got to see any logs burning down there, but there was a time or two that we got to see Samantha using the top of it. The kitchen actually went through two major transformations. The first season, it had a blue tile wall behind the stove wall. Later, it became a brick wall. And then in the final two seasons, the kitchen got a massive rehaul, complete with an impossible stairwell. Look at that steep pitch. It almost goes straight up, and the steps have almost no depth to them. Try descending that. Bewitched author David Pierce has some information on the reasons behind that change. So during April 1970, the last week, a fire ravaged the sets and burned everything pretty much to the ground. So that meant that they had to rebuild the sets, which is why when the show comes back in season seven, there's a brand new kitchen that has a breakfast nook, 
the weird stairs that go to nowhere, the living room, even though it kept mainly the same uh, setup, brand new carpeting and brand new wallpaper, brand new fireplace, everything brand new. And, and Dora even mentions it a little bit in the first episode of that season. The closet over by the washer and dryer became a few different things. Just a basic broom closet, a much larger closet with a freezer in it, and in one episode, Samantha even refers to it as a cellar when she hears Aunt Clara land down there. When Sam opens the door for her, we see Clara climbing up some stairs. Now we'll take a little tour around the kitchen. Once again, be looking for an Easter egg hidden in the room. Did you spy it? It was a floating piece of cake from the episode Marriage Witches Style when Serena pops in for a visit and helps herself to some cake. As we walk out in the hallway, if you look to your right, you see the door that leads to the garage. Straight ahead, you see the den. This room saw perhaps the most transformations of any room on the set. In season one, Darren has a bathroom in the den. It even has a shower. But, it later becomes just a closet. Speaking of bathrooms, if this were a real home, where would you put one on the main floor? In the den, like season one, or somewhere else? By the way, I checked and there is room under the stairs for a half bath. In the den, we see two different fireplaces on two different walls over the course of the series. And the furnishings and artwork on the walls change constantly. As mentioned before, the walls are at odd angles with hardly a 90 degree angle in the whole room. But still, all in all, an amazing den. Who wouldn't want to work there? Some odd happenings that took place here. Uncle Arthur teaching Darren a fake incantation to ward off trouble. Hiding a spotted elephant and getting caught. and incredibly lifelike talking busts of Darren and his boss, Larry Tate. If you're curious what happened to these busts after filming, Bewitched historian David Pierce is going to fill us in. The busts actually still exist. Um, Larry Tate's, which is David White's head, is at the Forest Lawn Memorial in his little slot with his ashes along with his son. And then I'm not sure what happened to Dick York's and now a short tour of the room. Look for an Easter egg from the show. Did you spot Samantha's Caldwell soup drawings on the drafting table? That's from season one when Sam comes up with some of her own ideas for Darren's ad campaign and he accuses her of witchcraft. And that brings us back to the hallway for a view we actually never got to see on the show. The view from the den looking out into the living room and foyer. Here are some pieces that made appearances on the wall by the front door. And I think we'll end here, where we started, with the artwork most often seen in the entryway. A piece that's attributed to Carell Fabricius from the Rembrandt workshop entitled, appropriately, Girl with a Broom. I'm sure that was no coincidence. After all, this was the home of our favorite girl with a broom. 
And now we'll take a walk through the entire main floor, this time with no Easter eggs. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy the tour. If you enjoyed today's tour of the main floor of the Bewitched Home, make sure to come back next time, where we'll be heading upstairs and to the backyard, and even the garage. You'll find out why the garage couldn't possibly be where it is shown, and we'll also discover other shows and movies that use the Bewitched set. And, for fun, I'll give the approximate square footage of the home, plus the cost of the home, and Darren's income in today's dollars so you can see if the Stevens really could afford this home. Don't forget to subscribe. That way you'll know every time a new TV or movie home shows up on this channel. But as for today, that's a wrap. See you next time on Behind the Scenes. Why do so many people, including myself, love 1164 Morning Glory Circle? I think it's because the layout of the house and the set design were so great that we actually got to see all four walls of the house, which was very rare on television at that time. It was usually three walls, but it seemed that that was an actual house. It was furnished a lot like our own childhood homes were, or like our grandparents' homes were, and it just always had a cozy feeling to it. And I feel like that that house could be built today, and it would look just as modern as it did back in the 60s.